Welcome back to this video. This video will see VLSM exercise number one. So in this exercise, we have two requirements. First requirement is for a library and it needs 60 hosts. The second one is a computer lab. They need 28. Okay, 60 hosts and 28 hosts. And the network ID is given as 220.10.10.0 slash 24. So this is a class C address and we have to work it out from this ID given. We have a library that needs 60, computer lab that needs 28. So how are we going to do it? We always, always start with the highest requirement our highest requirement in this exercise is 60 right so we need couple of things we need first of all the two power table so let me write it down 2 to the 1 2 2 to the second 4 third 8 fourth 16 fifth 32 and 6th 64 okay and I am stopping here because we are already at 64 our highest is 60 right so this much is enough so 2 to the 6th will give us 64 but we won't be able to use all 64 because one will use as network ID the other one will use as the broadcast ID so therefore we can go all the way until dot 63 which will be our broadcast id and obviously this here will be our network id which means two twenty dot ten dot ten dot sixty three this is the broadcast okay this is the broadcast ID. And this is the network ID. For this subnet. Right. Okay. So now available host are what's in between. So dot one, right? Next one is dot one. And 1 minus 63 is 62. So all the way to dot 62 are available. Okay, but we only need 60. That means 1 will go for the interface, the router interface also. Which means additional 1. 1 host is still available. We are only, at this point we are only wasting 1 IP address. But if they add one more host, obviously they're going to add one more host and we can use that address for that particular host right but at the moment we are only wasting one IP address in this subnet because out of this 62 we can use all the way 61 host including this interface right this interface here we need to provide an IP address so we can use that that means we are only wasting one IP address so that is our first requirement. We can work it out. And the slash value is what? So to find out the slash value, we let me draw this 128, 64, 32, 16, 8, 4, 2, 1. If we borrow one bit, it's 128. The slash value is 25. Because class C by default network is slash 24. So from here onwards, if we borrow one bit, it becomes slash 25. So above 128, it will be slash 25. If we borrow two bits, it is slash 26. And that's what we did, right? We borrowed two bits 
and our slash value is 26 and our increment will be in 64 but we are not incrementing by 64 we are incrementing by really 63 because the next subnet will start at 64 and I will show you when we do the 28 requirement but at the moment our slash value is 26 and if we write this one out okay it will be 255 dot 255 dot 255 dot what's 128 plus 64 because we borrowed two bits right so we need to add these two 128 plus 64 is 192 So this will be our subnet mask slash format and just writing it out like this. Basically they are the same thing. Okay, slash 26 and 255, 255, 255, 192. They are the same thing. We are just writing it out in different formats. So we are ready to configure everything for the first requirement. So let's do that. So let me write it down here as well. So let me use this 220.10.10.0 slash 24. So for the first, it will start at 220.10.10.0 and it will go all the way 63. This is for the first, first one. Now we can give dot one to this interface. Okay, the rest will go for the host all the way until 62. 63 is the broadcast, so we can use that. So all the way until 62. So go to the router. Global configuration. Interface G00 no shut. IP address 220.10.10.1 You can give the first address or the last one whichever you like to do it. I like to go for the first one for the interface. So that is the first available and the subnet mask 255.255.255.192 Right? 192. How 192? Let me show you one more time 128 plus 64 because we borrow two bits in this case slash 25 if we borrow one bit slash 26 if we borrow two bits meaning 128 plus 64 is 192 that's how we got 192 so that's done now let's assume there are hosts no the rest will go for that host so we are done with the first requirement. Now let's do the second one. 28 host, right? This 28 host we are working. So that network ID for the 28 host will start at 1 above this. 1 above this is 64, right? 220.10.10.64. That is the network ID for this subnet with 28 hosts for the computer lab okay and it's going to end but before that let me show you the table 28 right we need 28 so exact 28 is not actually possible if we go for 2 to the 4th is 16 is not enough 2 to the 5th is 32 so that's where we need to stop right 2 to the 5th 32 but we only need 28 but again exact number is not possible which means the block size will be 32 but we cannot use the entire 32 we can use up to 31 so 32 minus 2 1 for network id 1 for broadcast is 30 so 30 hosts are there to use and we are going to use one for this interface 
so the remaining 29 is usable for the host but we only need 28 that means one additional IP is still available we are only wasting one IP at this time but if we add one more host then we can use that IP for that particular host so let's see now broadcast ID 220.10.10.95 now what's the slash value it's again 128 64 32 16 8 4 2 1 right now if I borrow 1 bit slash 25 if I borrow 2 bits 26 3 bits 27 and that's what we did for this requirement we borrowed 3 bits and our increment is 32 but we cannot use the entire 32 we are only using 31 but the usable hosts are actually 30 because one will go for network ID one will go for broadcast ID so slash 27 it just means the number of network bits instead of slash 24 which is the default for class C we have borrowed three more bits which means 24 plus 3 is 27 right right here 1 2 3 27 so if we write it down like this 255 dot 255 dot 255 dot what we borrowed 3 bits that means we need to add 128 plus 64 plus 32 is equal to 224 So this will be the subnet mask. So we are ready to configure. We got the network ID, broadcast ID, we got the slash value and we have the subnet mask written like this. So let's go to this uh, router interface. Exit interface. We are doing this one now. G001 no shut IP address 220.10.10.65 right 64 is a network ID we cannot use that 64 is a network ID we won't be able to use that the next available is 65 so that's why I'm going with 65 255.255.255 224 224 how like this 128 plus 64 plus 32 because we borrowed three bits so we have to add all these the slash value above 32 is slash 27 done Now we have satisfied the requirements for both library and computer lab. So the remaining host now we can assign into the computer lab. So that's VLSM exercise number one. So hope you understood. Now if you want me to add and show you a couple of hosts, let's say we have a PC and another PC. If this will help you understand better. I can add obviously I'm not going to add the entire 20 you know 8 but uh, just to show you couple you will understand so I need to I can uh, configure DHCP here and assign them like that if I want to but if I only have two I just show you manually 
so this will be what 220 dot 10 dot 10 dot 66 and the subnet mask will come like this but you need to change it because this is not the default subnet mask remember so we have to change it to 224 here and the default gateway is this interface so it is 220.10.10.65 this interface that's the default let's go to the other one 220.10.10.67 right subnet mask you need to change to 224 default is 65 now if I add one PC here Two twenty dot ten dot ten dot two because one is given for this interface, so two is available, and I need to change this to one ninety two because borrowed bits are two, so slash twenty six one twenty eight plus. Let me show you one twenty eight plus sixty four is one ninety two. That's why we need to provide one ninety two here. And the gateway is 220.10.10.1. Now, if I try to ping to this PC, will it ping? Let's see. I'm pinging 66, right? 66 and 67. So 220.10.10.66. Not like that, ping 220.10.10.66 and it's doing the ARP request and it should ping after that and we are getting the reply and if I do 67 it should ping and we are getting the reply and if I go here ping 220.10.10.2 for this PC right this PC I am pinging and I am getting the reply now what happens if I remove the default gateway if I remove this now will it ping it will not it will fail because the gateway is missing you see request timed out and it will say request timeout again because it cannot contact the gateway so you have to provide the default gateway so let me add that 220.10.10.1 so this is VLSM exercise number one hope it helps somewhat and if you have any questions you can ask me down below we'll see some other concept perhaps some more exercise in the next video if these videos are helping you in any ways please give me a thumbs up other than that, I'll see you in the next video. Until then, stay tuned. Thank you and good day.